Today I am showing you my creative space and I'm showing you how I store or how I organize my papers and my ephemera. So this is my creative space. It is a little bit tight. Um, I am not going to lie that it's the best, most ideal arrangement to be here in my laundry room, but it is the space that is available to me and therefore I am taking advantage as much as I can to dig in and just settle myself in one spot without having to move. I'm using a couple of cameras so that you can see some different angles since it is a tight space. Uh, so let's begin the tour. So the most important thing on this counter is this mat where I cut down my paper pieces. And inside my drawer I have this cutting tool and this uh, ruler and it allows me to cut paper pretty precisely. This originally was used for quilting or sewing but I kept using this system and it works really well for me for for example when I have postcards that I want to cut down to just the right size I can measure them and cut them down very easily. Now, one of the questions that we're going to talk about is how to store your ephemera. And the other thing that we're going to talk about is how I go about um, storing my papers so that I can quickly grab them when I start collaging. One thing I want to say about storing your ephemera, there is no right answer. Every person has a different space and everyone has a certain tolerance for, for how you display things, how you store things, and if you have too much or if it's all out. Sometimes some people don't, don't want to see it. They want a clean space. Um, Sometimes people need to put their things away because they don't have the space to display things, right? So there's not a one-size-fits-all uh, solution for everyone and, and storing their ephemera. You know when you've got a good system when you are able to, to, to have your papers in such a way that you can start creating pretty much from the get-go. That's what you want. When you have free time and you want to create, you don't want to start having to look through things, having to sift through things, having to figure out where things are and what you have, right? Because that just sucks up your time and it, it takes away from your ability to create. So the system of organization that works for you is the one where you are able to start creating pretty much when you sit down. There should be very little fussing through your things to find what you're looking for. That's what you want when you're looking for a way to organize your stuff. The system that I use are these nesting boxes. They're just whatever boxes that I could find on hand. And I have, I use these boxes, number one, to you know, have a lot of papers at my disposal, but I also use them to separate the sizes into more manageable um, groups that I can easily go through to find what I'm looking for. Well, easily is not exactly the right word. Um, it takes me a long time to, to go through these um, if I'm looking for something but it's, it's manageable for me. This is the amount that I am comfortable with. And I like these three sizes. Do I have more papers? I do. Yes, I do. Um, but for now, these are the ones that I have in front of me. If I get to a certain point where I get tired of them, 
particularly these. I go through these all the time when I'm creating collages. Sometimes I just get tired of seeing the same stuff over and over and over again. So I will swap it out. I'll just take out a bunch, set them aside somewhere else, and then go through some of these other boxes and get smaller items or tear up some smaller pieces and then um, put them in my small box. All right, so let me show you what I have up here. So storage ideas. These are some really good storage ideas. So my first idea was boxes, empty boxes of things, right? Another idea are these um, what is this? It's a letter rack, a letter rack, right? I love these because you can stand up things. You can put photos. I have a bunch of old postcards in here, any kinds of papers, you know, these are super really nice, you know, dividers. I also have this. I got this at a at the at the the bargain section of Target. So this was like a three dollar thing. I think this is meant for you to put in your desk to separate um, pencils and pens and paper clips and things like that, right? But I like them because I can store my ephemera in here standing up so that I can very easily thumb through and find things, right? This is, this is what I like and it's still kind of a mess, but that's okay. Um, I go through this often enough that I relatively know what's in here. So it's, it's fine. So that's this one. Here's another desk organizer. This one I have a lot of playing cards in. And I have some, some dictionary pages and uh, I guess tags, just, you know, just whatever. So this is a desk organizer. This, this item and this item are made by Punch Studio. That's the name of it, Punch Studio. You can find them on Amazon. I also, I got these at uh, Tuesday morning, which is a discount retailer. Tuesday morning and Target. So they were, they were not expensive. Another idea that I have seen people do with organizing their ephemera is to take a sketchbook and use that. Imagine that you have a sketchbook, a blank sketchbook, and you have ephemera. If, if you have pieces that you want to work with potentially and you want a way to organize them, um, you can put your ephemera into a book like a sketchbook so that you can flip through the pages and find what you're looking for. What you can do to push it, to put it down without, without gluing it permanently is um, you put something like a sticky note on the back of your ephemera and then you take, and then you take some glue from a glue stick and glue the sticky only, just the sticky. And if you put it in, it's there and it's, it will come off on your, from your sticky. Does that make sense? So you put the sticky onto your piece of ephemera. You put glue on the sticky note and then you put it in your notebook.
this seems like a big process and for me this wouldn't work because I have quite a lot of ephemera that I, it would take me months and months and months and it would take me multiple um, journals to do but if you just have some really good pieces that you want to keep track of and you want to eventually use in your collage art but you don't um, know how to how to you know store it or organize it then this is one way that you can do it right that's that's pretty cool here's another example of a way that you can store your ephemera this is a little binder and inside it has these pocket pages um, you can fill them with quite a lot of things right Sometimes what I use them for is when I find combinations of papers that I think can go good together, but I'm not ready for a collage, I will put them in here so that I don't lose track of them. Right? So you can store all kinds of things in a binder with these pocket protectors or page protectors. Um, and the good thing about, not so much this one, but binders is you can buy them one inch or two inches, a half an inch. You can open the rings and then add however many pocket protectors, however many page protectors that you want. And then you can even change the order of the papers um, you know, whatever you would like. So this is another system that I have seen people use and seems to be a good idea. Okay, someone had asked me, how do I collage or show an example of how you collage with the papers that you have in your space? So what I would do is find a spot Okay, I have a something here. And now I'm going to pull out my papers. And so this is about size four by six. It's not very big. So I'm primarily going to be lo looking in some of the smaller ones. Um, um, so I would just start by pulling out what I think might work. Now I could make a collage by itself, standalone, or I can also pay attention to what's on the other side. This was a postcard, so it has this image already on it of this butterfly. There's books and then there's black and white. The thing that stands out is this color, so it's a very bright kind of red-orange. So I could look for something that would um, potentially work on both sides, like this. This matches this, so I might use that. Um, so I'm just gonna pull out papers that might work. Um, let's see. I like this this piece because um, of, of these angles. There's kind of angles here, and then there's purple, and this is purple. So I'm just looking for I'm looking for relationships between what I the pieces that I'm using. So far, I really like this piece just because it fits nicely on the page, and it's got handwriting on it. So I, I do want to keep this. This is for sure. I'm keeping this. This I'm not sure about, these I'm not sure about, and then I also want to use this. So now I am I have two things that are for sure, and now I'm just playing around with the other pieces until I can find something that works. Okay, 
right? So now I'm just kind of solving problems. How do I fix this? How do I, I like this, but I, I there's too much space up here. So now I go back over here. That could work. It's a bit pretty busy. What else do I have? All right. So what I did was I decided that I'm going to, I like, I do like these three pieces. So I've decided that I'm gonna pull this text down a little bit farther on top of this so that it shows a little bit more prominently. What's nice about this text page is that it is, um, it's this, this color this kind of a beige color that is different from this and different from this. So there's enough of a contrast that it makes it look interesting. So I'm going to keep that. And then this, well, all right. I don't want to be hunting for a long time for something else, so I'm just going to use that. And then this, I will find a spot for it at the end when I've glued everything down. These um, eclectic workbook or glue books these are more casual, so I will not spend a lot of time fussing with these too much. So I can quickly just glue down the pieces. So here I just look and see which comes first. This one is the very first on the bottom, so I will glue this one first, then this one, and then this, I'll just put it here. Okay, that's it. So this one came together really quickly. That's kind of unusual. It usually takes me a lot longer to find my pieces, but that's okay, I take it as I come. Sometimes they come quick and sometimes they take a long time. So there you go. Another person asked me, how do I keep my collages looking different? How do I do it so that it's not the same thing being repeated again and again? Um, well, that's kind of a hard question to answer because a lot of my work is kind of repeating um, in the sense that I use a lot of the same kinds of papers. You know, they I tend to be drawn very much to this neutral, these neutral colors, um, lots of beiges and creams and blacks and whites. Yeah, there's pops of color, but but not very much. Um, but it all manages to look different because the papers are different, right? They're, they're all book pages, or I have a lot of book pages, but just the slight variances in the size or the font or the language, you know, it makes it just a little bit different each time. So, yeah, they do look different. The collages do look different, um, but they can be on the plain side and I'm totally okay with that. I, it doesn't bother me that, that they sometimes look very similar. So let me show you what else I have in my space. So now up here in my closet or cabinet above, um, on the very top in that brown box is materials that I find that are papers from the 1960s. So everything that's 60s goes in the brown box. And eventually, if I start a glue book project just with something um, with 60s papers or mid-century papers, then I know I can go there. In the flower box, this is all stencils. So I get my stencils up there. And then up here are just um, ephemera, bits of ephemera. In the middle aisle I have here, I have um, paper pads. Paper pads are there. Here are postage stamps, and this is more ephemera. And then this is the ephemera that you saw before. And just more envelopes and postcards on the side over here. On this side I have glue books. These are all blank glue books. These are old planners and that I can turn into glue books if I want. And then there's some envelopes in here for mailing things. There I've got my big shot and up top I have some lace from the 
from the Lace Museum. And then I've got more envelopes at the top. And I guess also I have here the green handle thing is the Zutter, Zutter bind it all. I also have space down here. So in here I have some tools, some Rolodex cards I'm in the process of making, some stickers, stamps, punches, things like that. Here I have my glues and tapes, double-sided tapes. Now on the other side of this door is my kitchen, but on the back of this door, let me back up so that you can see it better. So on these shelves I have some rubber stamps, um, inks, ink pads, a few more papers, some zines, some other bits of mail, some cling stamps. These shelves back here, these ones I think I got them from Home Depot and they were like $12 a piece and they were super super long and my husband cut them down and I think we just got like two or three shelves and, and it was enough to cut down and put behind this door. When the door is open you don't see these shelves at all. They're completely covered. Now one thing about my space is that I don't have a place to bring in a stool or a chair. So I have to stand while I am collaging. Um, does this make a difference in how I collage? I, I suppose it does. I didn't really think about it until somebody pointed out that I am standing uh, instead of sitting and this means for all practical purposes that the longest stretches of time that i can go are say 30 minutes 40 minutes standing here at my desk at my counter uh, to collage after that i i move around i go somewhere else i go to the kitchen or you know go do something else and come back so in a way, I do feel like my experiences with collage, I, I'm very mobile. Um, I'm not sitting in one spot um, and concentrating and creating. I, I wonder even, I've never, I didn't think about it too much, but I, I'm wondering if the fact of being mobile is part of my creative process. It could be, it, it definitely could be because, because I'm not sitting. So I hope this has been useful for you. I hope that it's given you some ideas of what you can do with your own papers. Um, do let me know if you have some suggestions. I'm always curious. What are people doing? How are they doing it? What's working for you? What are some of your suggestions for storing your papers? I would love to hear. Um, so do let me know in the comments. And thanks so much for watching. I will see you the next time.